Hey, what's up everybody? It's Josh, KI6NAZ, and I wanted to talk to you about a cool little product called the Gotenna Mesh. Pretty cool little consumer grade product. Uh, this came out recently, relatively new, and what it is is it's a Bluetooth connected mesh networking radio system that doesn't require a license. Technically, the functions that it does right now out of the box Pretty interesting, pretty useful, but this is an interesting kind of philosophical sign of the times that I think we should talk about. So the Gotenna Mesh is a 900 megahertz radio that uses an app on your phone, Android and iPhone supported, to basically send text messages and using the GPS on your phone kind of ping your location and create GPS maps and all that fun stuff. Right out of the box, you don't need a service plan. They do offer a service if you want some more enhanced maps and some enhanced features. A couple of years back, Gotenna came out with their first model, which was a VHF, UHF, I believe UHF actually, device that was a little bit more stick-like. This kind of has rounded edges with an antenna that popped out. I wasn't really a fan of that because I thought it was kind of just a phone attached to an FRS radio. This is a different story, right? This operates in 900 megahertz, which a uh, bit different, right? They're putting a little bit more data in there, and it's basically kind of like a little digital mobile radio. No voice, strictly text messages and pinging people your location. It's very helpful if you're off grid and you don't really have a radio or you're not a radio operator yet. You still should get licensed, by the way. But this still has something that even if you are a radio operator, that you're going to want. So here's my Yaesu FT2DR GPS enabled APRS capable radio. A wonderful radio. Now my favorite handy talkie that I've ever owned. It allows you to do APRS. APRS allows you the similar thing. You can send out your location via RF. You can send text messages. You can send emails. You can tweet. You can do so many things with this awesome radio. But this still does something that this doesn't do. Now, if you watch my video on APRS on the Baofeng and getting started with that, I covered a brief history of what APRS is and how it works. Basically, you use something called a digipeter and an eye gate to take your radio signals that you're squawking out, your packets, and then um, amplify and retransmit them and in some cases connect them to the internet and send it to different websites like APRS.fi. Well, this has basically the same capability of the digipeters and the eye gates, kind of, all in one little package. And what this allows you to do is, if you were in a, a hike and you had two or three of these and your party got separated, or maybe you were separated on purpose, maybe you're doing a little search and rescue or something like that, and you're within the propagation range of these and of this system, which is, uh, this puts out about one to one and a half watts of power. Not a lot, but when you're kind of out in the middle of nowhere, you maybe get some elevation, it does about a mile to five miles uh, to, depending on terrain of kind of space, propagation space. What it does though, is if any one of these units are in the same space, even ones that don't know each other, they're just there. If you're sending a message from one Gotenna to another Gotenna and, and physically they can't talk, right, due to their increased range, right, there's just, the radios can't talk. If there's a Gotenna in the middle, that Gotenna will act like a node and send the radio information on its way, right? Mesh networking. So it creates a connected, I don't want to say internet, because that's a whole different thing that we'll talk about in a little bit. But it allows everybody within this cloud now, literally almost a cloud that you're creating, talk to each other. And again, it's not about knowing, you don't have to know the man in the middle or the person in the middle. You just have to all be in the middle together. That's very intriguing for lots of reasons. At the time of recording this, the app that comes with or used for supporting the Gotenna is fairly well featured. It doesn't do an astronomical amount of things, but what it does do, it does pretty well and pretty seamlessly. You're primarily gonna use this to track your location, drop pins, track your progress if you're on a hike, and then possibly send that information out to other people that can receive you via another Gotenna mesh. You can also use it for text messaging, which is kind of like I think it's most bread and butter thing, the most interesting thing that it offers. You can use this, think of an urban environment, lots and lots of people, LA in particular, um, very, very dense with, with these devices. You can send a message across town or across over miles and miles and miles via just this mesh network, no having to go onto your cell provider's uh, towers or system in any way, which is 
awesome because that is like an off-grid solution to a problem that we may not be facing now, but we could be facing in the future, either through disasters or difficult financial times, which we'll talk about in a second. So by and large, as a tool, it functions well. It is a, a text messaging, location tracking, GPS enabled, node based mesh network device. And I think the package is pretty cool. So some of the particulars, I get about a full day on a charge on this one. The kit comes with two, because you need at least two, right? Who are you gonna talk to without two? And uh, they work about up to a mile from my house. How I have one of these set up is permanently attached to an old Android phone. It's not connected to a cell system at all. It just uses this, this, that's all it does. And I put it high on the roof, um, not the roof, the ceiling of my house. Eventually I'm planning attaching this to a solar panel and hoisting it up on my antenna mast that I have for amateur radio. That will allow it to get much further out. There's guys who are modding these things, putting SMA adapters and putting uh, much more advanced antennas on them. The quirky QRP keychain, the guy who sent me keychain for the live stream, um, he's been modifying these, so if you're interested in that, go check the link in the description, I'll go to him. And there's a wealth of knowledge out there. There's a website called iMeshU that you are able to post your node location if you have a setup like mine, where the node really isn't gonna go anywhere. And what that means is, if you look at the map, you get a pretty good idea of how many nodes are in your area. Now, I know that most of you, when you see this or hear about this, you think outdoors, far away from people and and wanting to stay in touch with the group that's great but remember you're possibly not going to have that long haul cell phone connection out and this really doesn't function um in the same way as that system it doesn't integrate into like a cell phone network and pass the data into the cell phone network and i don't think it should i don't think that's the point of this per se so I won't dounce around any longer with it. The Goten and Mesh has kind of a philosophical point for me that I think is what makes it really interesting. I think this is an example of the future, the way we are all going as a people, as a society, towards mesh networking. Not for things like Netflix necessarily or YouTube, at least that would be way out in the future. But for right now, there's no reason why we can't just mesh network most of our communications, particularly our text-based communications. And this would be a step towards that future. If you have any concern of net neutrality, of, of Big Brother listening to you, or anything like that, which is kind of funny, because if you think about the Venn diagram, a lot of liberals like net neutrality, and conservatives are kind of concerned about Big Brother and concerned about disaster. This guy rides right in the middle, right there in that overlap, if you will. I love Venn diagrams. The Gotenna Mesh, by being an off-grid mesh network system or mesh network device, allows you to kind of skirt all of those things. It has encrypted communication, so you don't have to worry about anyone eavesdropping on you. And from my understanding, this hasn't been hacked yet. I think the first gen model had an issue that they were able to figure out um, a bypass or a exploit, but not the case here. In fact, this is so secure that I believe they started doing blockchain transfers for Bitcoin on this node network, in the mesh network. So pretty secure as far as encryption goes. Now there are two models of, of messages. You can send a shout, which just is everybody that can hear this node will get a shout. And then there's the contacts, right? The contacts are like the node of you and the node of your buddy, spouse, loved one, whatever. And you can send messages to them. Now, you going back to the philosophy thing, if you're concerned about net neutrality and you're concerned about major carriers, internet providers jacking up the rates, well, if you had a mesh network that's well populated and robust, they really can't put the screws to you because you always have a way to communicate, right? So that's one of the things a lot of people say is that we're beholden to these carriers, these companies, and that communication or the internet is a right, well, maybe we should take that right back and support things like mesh networking. Because what's the biggest thing that will cause carriers to fall in line? When there's a competition. When there's competition against their product and in their market. And it doesn't have to be from another carrier. It can be a uh, unknown, unexpected upstart in the field like a mesh device. Now, Think about your typical day, how you communicate, putting 
websites aside for a second, not the consuming of data, the actual how you exchange information with people that you want to talk to or communicate with in this case. For me, it's text messaging. And so you might be asking yourself, but I want the internet and I want YouTube and I want Netflix. Well, this isn't that yet. But we're at a point where we need to start paying with our dollar and voting with our dollar, paying with our dollar, of course we pay with our dollar, voting with our dollar in the sense that we support things and technologies that we want to see grow into the future and potentially give us those things we're really looking after. Right now, this is an, an, an interesting way to communicate. I think that there are a couple of niche examples, particularly those that live in an urban environment where you could have power outages like in New York and people who go outdoors a lot with friends. This isn't very heavy and um, it's pretty easy to charge. It, work, it powers off of a little micro USB and it works great off of simple solar panels. Again, going back to uh, Quirky QRP, he's got his rigged up in a cool little waterproof box and he's got a very inexpensive, I think $15 solar panel off of Amazon connected to it and it just it just works at that point. You just leave it alone and it does its node thing, transferring packets for um, any nodes that slip into its propagation range. So overall, it's, it's a novel, interesting product and for the ham radio enthusiast that is interested in hacking on things and experimenting, this is great. This is a cool little new thing for us to play with. I'm already figuring out how to crack this open and, and put an SMA in it because I think that's the, um, that's the step that's going to open up some doors as far as getting a better antenna on it. From the, the messaging standpoint, it works perfect. It, you can send your location. People can see your location if they want to come to you or you, they want you to go to them. It, it, makes, it makes all kinds of sense in, in that way. How it's difficult to review is that it's kind of it. it it's, a, it's a sign of a future and going forward, and I find it interesting, and you will find it interesting if it's in your niche uh, target area. If you are an enthusiast of mesh design and mesh systems, this would be an area for you. It's something fun, it's, it's novel, and there's a couple little hacks you can do to increase your range a lot. You know, get it up high, as always, and you'll get a lot better performance, right? So people like that would love it. And again, go to the iMeshU website, link in the description, for more information there. They have a robust forum, and surprisingly, a lot of ham radio operators are already involved in this and, and think it's kind of cool, me included. For everybody else, though, it's kind of not there yet, or this is what it is, and it's a, it's a nice product, but you may not have a need for it, and that's okay. That doesn't say anything against this product. It says that where we're at technology-wise, this is a really good example of, of a step forward. Now, you're going to need a lot more steps to get to where we may want to be Netflix over a, you know, a mesh network, largely because we don't own the content, right? You've got to remember content rights. So think about it like that is this is a cool little step in the right direction towards uh, competing, if you will, against the larger companies and carriers out there. So support mesh networks, particularly ones that have a cool little outdoorsy emergency preparedness bend. And if you are in any of those Venn diagrams, Please look into the product a little bit more. Links in the product, or links to the product are in the description. I found these on Amazon. I think they were $170 around there at the time of recording, which you get two. Reminder, you don't need a license, so you can hand this to anybody, have them load the app, and you can be operating with them, communicating in a situation where there may be no cell towers. So big ups there. So that's gonna do it on my overview slash review of the Gotenna Mesh. I think it's a fun little consumer product that, again, because you don't have to have a license, you can put it in anybody's hands and they can experience it and have some fun with it, assuming they understand what they're using and what they're playing with. Some people might be like, well, what's this? I could just use my phone. It's like, well, yes, of course, that's, that's the point. That's why we're doing this, because you don't always have your phone. Anyway, support Mesh. Uh, I think that's a, a great technology in, in ever which way you go. And if you are an enthusiast or you are tinkering with these, post your results in the links or in the comments below or whatever else you're working on mesh related. And I'd love to hear it. Okay, guys? This is Josh, KI6NAZ. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and hit all my social links down in the description. My newsletter comes out once a month. It just costs a dollar. Links in Patreon. Go check that out. Okay, guys? All right, that'll do it. Thank you so much for watching. Take it easy.